Hi, this is Rochelle with Scrap Craft Tastic, and I'm going to show you how to make the scalloped edge word dividers or tabs using Silhouette Studio. I made a set, a custom set for someone, and posted this photo in my stories on Instagram, and I was asked to show how I made them, so I'm going to do that now. I'm doing this in Silhouette Studio, but I would imagine you can do the same thing in uh, Cricut Space. I haven't really, I have the Cricut Explore Air 2, but I haven't actually designed anything using their software online yet. So basically all I've done is make my own SVGs and just import them over there and cut them. So I don't really know how to design over there. But I would imagine that it's very similar, if not the same. So let's just go ahead and get started. You do need to know how wide you want this edge piece to be. You can um, also make them just a standard size, like maybe two inches wide or three inches wide or whatever you want. But for the most part, I've seen them cover the entire edge of a divider in for a planner or traveler's notebook so and they can be on the top on the side and i've even seen them on the bottom and you would do the same thing regardless of where you want to place it except for on the bottom um you would change the position of the letters but we're not even going to get into that we're just going to keep it simple and the first thing that I do is make my circles. You use circles to make your scallops. So then you need to figure out how big do you want your scallops. Um, I think I did those scallops were a little smaller because it was for a smaller size planner. So this time I'm going to make them about an inch and a quarter. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect. But when you get to duplicating them, you you know you might want them to be the same size. So I'm gonna I lock the ratio, and I'm gonna just go ahead and type in 1.25. And so since it's locked, it should adjust accordingly, and it didn't. So let's just type the whole thing out. Okay, there we go. For some reason, I've noticed that if you don't type the whole number in Studio, it must be a bug, that it doesn't recognize it. You have to actually type out the whole number, not just change a few of the numbers. Anyway, so I'm going to take this circle that I've made and go over here and replicate it to the right. Now, if I wanted my scallops to be this deep, I can just leave that. So if I didn't want them that deep, this is what I would do. I would highlight the second circle and just scoot it over some to where I want it to be. Then I'm just going to copy these and replicate. And then I would scoot it over again. You probably won't be able to, I mean, if, unless you count how many times you scoot it over, but you probably won't get them exactly the same, but I'll show you how to adjust for that. And then I'm just going to duplicate this again. And that's probably way more than I need. But I'm going to set this to work for an A5. So, And this is going to be for the top. So I'm going to make this five and a half inches. So I have well more, I have quite a bit more than what I need. So just highlighting these. I can see that that's almost five and a half inches at 5.419 inches wide. So I don't need these guys. So I'm going to get rid of them. So to make sure that all of my circles are equally spaced, I'm going to go over here to transform. And then I am going to check the spacing horizontally. I'm just going to click on that. And it made a minor adjustment to make sure that all of the circles are spaced exactly the same. And now I need to adjust for the width because we need this to be five and a half inches wide, not 5.4 inches. So I'm going to group these by clicking. I can do control G or you can, I don't even know how to do it. Um, 
Ooh, okay, here we go. You go to object and group, but I've already grouped it. So um, I use the keyboard shortcuts as much as possible to save time. So if you want to group something, it's control G. Let's go ahead and change the width to five and a half. We got our lock line. So this is actually going to make our circles a little bit bigger, but it's not that much. So we're going to gonna roll with it. 5.50. See there, threw, threw in that extra one. Let's do it again, 5.500. It's just not right. Why does it do that? Okay, I'm going to unlock it and see if I can get it to do it. There we go. Oh, I don't know why it does that. It makes me crazy. Oh. <laughs> so now we know that we want this to be five and a half. So then we're going to come back over here to our shapes and we're going to go for a rectangle this time. I'm just going to draw a rectangle, try to make it five and a half wide. If I can't, then I'll just go over here and type in what I need it to be. The height at this point doesn't matter. Just make sure that the height is taller than what you want your um, edge piece to be. So I'm going to make sure my width is 5.5. And let's see, it's 5.5 here. So these are all the pieces except for the text that we'll need. Now, I've got my circles the way I want them to be. If you're like me and you want to be able to come back and make adjustments if you need to or use this for some other purpose, I always save a duplicate of the things like this that I make. So before I go any further with these circles, I'm going to copy and paste. And that's control C, control V, or over here, edit, copy, paste. And push these circles off to the side in case I need them again for something. Because we're going to go ahead and weld these together. So we're going to go to the modify panel and just click weld. So now we have a full scallop, but we want our top edge to be straight, which is what we use this rectangle for. So I'm going to bring the rectangle up on top of the circles and I'm going to align it to the middle of the circles as best as I can. Okay, then I'm just going to go back over here to the transform panel, make sure that that is centered properly. Okay. Then I'm going to go back to the Modify panel, and I'm going to weld this together. Now, if you know you don't want your scallop edge piece to be this tall from the bottom of this to the top of this, then you can go ahead and reduce the height of that rectangle. You can't reduce it down like this small, but you can reduce it to right above the tops of the circles. That gives you a, a little less adjusting that you have to do later on. So then I'll select both of them and weld them together. So there we have that piece. Now this piece is 1.357 inches tall. If you don't want it that tall or if you want it to be a little shorter, then you can select the endpoints tool, click on the endpoint, then hold down the shift key and click on the other one. Then use your down arrow to scoot that down to the height that you think you want. And I don't want mine to be extremely tall, so we're going to go with that. And that gives me about a little less than an inch tall. So I'm going to stick with that because this is for a bigger planner. It's for an A5. So then I'm going to type out the words that I want. And I want this one to say personal. And it's probably best to use all caps. Um, you can use a script. You just kind of have to play around with it um, because scripts don't generally look good. That's one, like one of my pet peeves. Scripts are not good in all caps. They don't. A lot of people have problems reading script, for one. And then all caps, it just doesn't look good. 
Let's just look at that. See, that is not a good look <laughs> from a graphic design standpoint. So we won't be doing all cap scripts. Um, you could do a lowercase, but then you get into if you have um, letters that go below, like a Y or an F or I don't know, a Z that have um, a lower piece to them. If you have those types of letters, then that's going to be a problem with readability too. So I would stay away from that if you, for instance, if I wanted to do today. Let's try that. And I'm just going to say I want the Aaron script for today. You see how the Y goes below? Then you're going to have to attach this to your base that we just made. And so that's going to, the Y is going to get lost. You can't do it this way. So that's the issue with trying to use a script. So I'm going to go back to using just a regular sans serif font. Okay, I think I'm going to use Franklin Gothic Heavy. Now, it's S72, which is about an inch. And I'm going to bring that down. Now, you can make this these letters as tall as you want. Let's go ahead and put my all caps back. Um, you can make it as tall as you want, as small as you want. I, I mean... The letters need to be whatever height you would consider a good height for a tab. So if you like your tabs extra tall, then make them that way. If you like them smaller, make them that way. And you can also, you know, come over here and kind of get a feel for the height. So this will be a little less than a half an inch. Because when you look at the measurement that of the box, where you typed it, it's going to give you the measurement of this full box. It's not giving you the actual measurement of the height of the letter. So you kind of have to play around with that on your own. Or I could go ahead and weld them and get an accurate height. So that's up to you. I didn't really want to weld them. I'm going to copy that and keep them over here in case I need to come back and make more than I know what size I used. So, and plus I can just copy this and use it again on another base. So I'm going to go ahead and copy my base too. Again, keeping all my parts. So if I need to come back and make something else, I'll have it available. I'm going to make a few copies. And let's go ahead and move these down out of the way. Okay. So back to this one, we're going to make personal our first one. And what you need to do is line it up on the top edge where you want it to be. And then it needs to oh, just overlap the edge just a little bit. Let's zoom in so you can see. See, I have it overlapping just a little bit. And I might even move that up just a little bit more. We don't even need it to overlap that much. And then I'm going to go ahead and align this to the left. And again, it's not going to align it all the way. It's going to align it based on the box that the text is in. So the box has margin on, on all sides. It's not actually the size of the text. I already copied some scallops, and this, maybe that wasn't the right thing to do. Let's take those off. So now let's copy this piece before we weld it because we're going to make some more and let's copy this that way we can still edit our letters before we weld all of that together so let's see i want to have five set a set of five tabs so let's move this down okay now back up here I hope I'm not making this too confusing. I'll just 
Select both and weld them together. Boom. There you have it. You can cut this and you're ready to make your own word divider or whatever you want to do. Then say you want some more. So I'm just going to move this over. I'm going to hold the shift key to make sure it stays in the same place and doesn't move up and down, just side to side. So I'm holding the shift key while I'm moving it. Then I'm going to take it and just change the text to lists. And then I'm going to move this one over just a bit. Let's change this. I'm kind of aligning them up to the next scallop over. I mean, oops. you can align them however you want to space them out. Um, let's do this one today. And then I'm trying to do them different. Let's do this one, trackers. Okay, and I'm just going to go ahead and align this one all the way to the right. And nope, we're not going to align that one to the right. Okay, we're going to align this one here. And let's align this one all the way to the right. and call it um, projects. Let's move it all the way to the right again, because it's a little shorter. Um, and you can probably play around with the alignment of these, because these words are varying widths. It's not going to just flow exactly like a tab system, but you get the general idea. So then I can just come back to these other pieces and weld them together. So there's my list one, it's my today, trackers, and projects. Then I can just line these up however I want them and cut them. And then if you decide that you just want it on the side, you can easily just turn them to the side once you cut them and, and adhere them however you want to use them. I mean, they can be used in any direction, except at the bottom, it would be a problem using them at the bottom. But, so, but that's basically how you do it. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.